I'm a member of the Nazi party. I am a criminal. Uh, the story of Oscar had all the right uh, ingredients it, because people love paradox. Oscar Schindler, a Nazi and an industrialist, is a complex figure from World War II. In 1973, Schindler told Page he wanted to be buried in Israel. While many in his position exploited the chaotic backdrop of the war for personal gain, Schindler diverged from this path. At midnight, you'll be free and I'll be hunted. His audacious efforts led to the salvation of approximately 1,200 Jews from the clutches of death camps. This video delves deep into the life and actions of Schindler, illuminating the paradox of his affiliation with the Nazi party while simultaneously risking everything to save those they persecuted. Early life and joining the Nazi party. Oscar Schindler was born on April 28, 1908, in the industrial city of Zwittau, Moravia, which is now part of the Czech Republic. His upbringing was far from remarkable. He belonged to a German-speaking family in an area predominantly inhabited by Czechs. His father, Hans Schindler, was a farm equipment manufacturer, and his mother, Luisa, was a homemaker. This relatively prosperous background allowed Schindler a comfortable childhood, marked by the typical pursuits of young men of his class and time. Education for Schindler was traditional, but he was not an academically inclined student. He had a penchant for the finer things in life, even from a young age. Social connections, charm, and an eye for business opportunities would become his signature traits as he grew older. These characteristics would also play a pivotal role in the twists and turns of his life during the tumultuous years of World War II. Schindler's youth was also marked by a series of personal ventures, both in business and love. By his early 20s, he had already worked various jobs and had ventured into several business enterprises, albeit with limited success. On the personal front, he married Emily Pelzel in 1928. Their marriage, while enduring, was tumultuous, with Schindler being known for his various extramarital affairs. The 1930s were a period of significant political upheaval in Europe. The aftermath of World War I had left deep scars, both economic and social. Germany in particular was grappling with the repercussions of the Treaty of Versailles, hyperinflation and widespread unemployment. These circumstances created a fertile ground for extremist ideologies. The National Socialist German Workers' Party, or the Nazi Party, rose to prominence during this period, tapping into the frustrations and aspirations of the German populace. In 1939, Schindler joined the Nazi party. This decision may seem paradoxical given the later chapters of his life, but at that moment, aligning with the Nazis was seen by many as a pragmatic choice. Membership offered protection, business opportunities, and social standing. For Schindler, the party's ideology was secondary to the tangible benefits it brought to his entrepreneurial endeavors. With the Nazi invasion and subsequent annexation of parts of Czechoslovakia, including Schindler's hometown, his association with the party began to bear fruit. Schindler became a spy for the Abwehr, the German military intelligence service. This position provided him with an opportunity to travel and interact with high-ranking Nazi officials, which would later serve his interests. However, it's essential to underscore that Schindler's affiliation with the Nazi party was not a reflection of deep-rooted ideological alignment. Instead, it was a manifestation of his opportunistic nature, a trait that would later be channeled for a much nobler cause. As the war progressed and the atrocities of the Holocaust became more evident, Schindler's interactions with his Jewish workers and the unfolding horrors would profoundly change his perspective and set him on a path of resistance against the very party he had once joined. Acquisition of Enamelware Factory In the grim shadows of World War II, Oskar Schindler's entrepreneurial spirit drove him to see opportunities where others saw only despair. It was this drive that led him to the acquisition of an enamelware factory in Krakow, Poland, shortly after the German invasion. This factory, which would later play a pivotal role in saving the lives of countless Jews, wasn't just a business endeavor for Schindler. It was a convergence point for his opportunistic nature and evolving moral compass. 
Upon Germany's invasion and subsequent occupation of Poland in 1939, the existing socioeconomic structure of the country was dramatically altered. Jewish-owned businesses were seized, and Jews were subjected to a barrage of oppressive regulations. Many were forced into ghettos, and their assets were confiscated by the Nazi regime. Schindler, with his connections within the Nazi party, saw an opportunity in this dark environment. The enamelware factory, previously owned by a Jewish businessman, was one such confiscated asset. Located in the industrial heart of Krakow, this factory specialized in the production of pots, pans, and various other kitchenware items. Schindler acquired the factory in 1939, renaming it Deutsche Emelowaren Fabrik, often referred to as DF. The acquisition was not purely a straightforward business transaction. Instead, it was facilitated by Schindler's connections within the Nazi apparatus, particularly his links with the SS, which played a significant role in the occupation. As the factory's new owner, Schindler had to staff his operations. This requirement led him to employ a significant number of Jewish workers. Initially, his motivations were far from altruistic. Jewish labor was cheaper, and in the economic climate of the war, it made good business sense to cut costs wherever possible. Moreover, employing Jews from the Krakow ghetto ensured a steady supply of labor as the SS was more interested in exploiting Jewish workers than exterminating them, at least in the early years of the war. However, as the factory's operations began, Schindler's perspective started to shift. His daily interactions with his Jewish workforce humanized the abstract concept of the enemy propagated by Nazi propaganda. Personal relationships developed, particularly with his Jewish accountant, Itzhak Stern. Stern, an astute and pragmatic individual, quickly became Schindler's right hand in the factory's operations. Their interactions, combined with the realities of the Holocaust unfolding around him, began to reshape Schindler's perception of the world and his place within it. The factory, while primarily producing enamelware, also ventured into the production of ammunition casings during the war. This diversification was strategic. By aligning his business with the war effort, Schindler ensured the protection and continuation of his operations. More importantly, it provided a shield for his Jewish employees, as workers in war-related industries were, for a time, exempt from deportations to extermination camps. As the war progressed and the Nazi regime intensified its campaign against the Jews, the DEF factory became more than just a business to Schindler. It became a refuge. What had started as a purely profit-driven venture slowly transformed into a life-saving operation. The factory, with its walls and guarded perimeter, provided a protective bubble against the atrocities outside. Motivations Behind His Actions The transformation of Oskar Schindler from an opportunistic businessman into a savior of over a thousand lives is one of the most intriguing narratives of World War II. The very idea of a member of the Nazi party actively working against the regime's sinister goals to save Jews begs the question, what motivated Schindler to take such monumental risks? Schindler's actions cannot be attributed to a singular catalyst. His evolution was gradual and was the result of a confluence of personal relationships, eyewitness experiences, and an intrinsic shift in moral compass. Firstly, the relationships Schindler cultivated with his Jewish workers played an undeniable role. As previously mentioned, his interactions with Itzhak Stern, the factory's accountant, were pivotal. Stern served not only as a window into the Jewish community's plight, but also as a moral anchor for Schindler. Their discussions, the stories shared, and the mutual respect that grew between them humanized the otherwise faceless victims of the Holocaust for Schindler. However, Stern was not the only influence. Over time, Schindler forged genuine bonds with many of his workers. He dined with them, celebrated their milestones, and shared their sorrows. Through these interactions, the abstract and distant propaganda-driven idea of the Jew as the enemy dissolved. In its place arose a palpable understanding of the Jews as individuals, with dreams, families, and aspirations not unlike his own. This realization made the brutality of the Holocaust personal for Schindler. Secondly, Schindler's proximity to the epicenter of Nazi atrocities ensured that he wasn't insulated from the horrors. 
he witnessed the liquidation of the Krakow ghetto, a harrowing event where thousands of Jews were either killed or sent to concentration camps. Scenes of brutality, of families being torn apart, of innocent lives being snuffed out, played out before his very eyes. For many, such events might have been traumatizing to the point of inducing detachment or denial. For Schindler, however, they ignited a fierce determination. The stark contrast between the vibrant, skilled, and humane Jewish individuals in his employ and the dehumanized, persecuted Jews outside his factory walls was jarring. It underscored the irrationality and the sheer evil of the Nazi regime's anti-Semitic actions. Finally, an introspective look at Schindler's character is essential. Before the war, his life was marked by opportunism, but not cruelty. There was a latent decency in Schindler, albeit overshadowed by his more hedonistic pursuits. The war, in all its grimness, acted as a crucible, bringing this latent decency to the fore. While it's challenging to pinpoint an exact moment or event at some juncture, Schindler's actions transcended strategic business moves. They became a moral imperative. The once profit-driven entrepreneur began to view his wealth and connections as tools for salvation rather than personal gain. Schindler's List The Life-Saving Document Amidst the pervasive darkness of the Holocaust, a glimmer of hope and humanity emerged in the form of a list. Schindler's List, as it came to be known, is not merely a compilation of names, but a testament to the indomitable spirit of one man's defiance against systemic evil. The significance of this document and its creation illuminates the zenith of Schindler's transformation and his unyielding commitment to saving lives. By 1944, the tide of World War II was turning. The Nazis, sensing their impending defeat, became increasingly desperate and vicious in their persecution of Jews. Concentration camps and extermination operations intensified, and the Jews in Krakow, including those in Schindler's factory, faced imminent deportation and certain death. It was within this climate of heightened urgency that the idea for Schindler's List was born. Schindler's determination to save his Jewish workers was unshakable. With the impending closure of the Krakow ghetto and the relocation of its inhabitants to the notorious Auschwitz extermination camp, he devised an audacious plan. He would relocate his entire operation, including his workforce, to Brunlitz in Czechoslovakia, under the pretext of it being essential to the war effort. This relocation was not merely a business decision, but a strategic move to keep his Jewish workers away from the death camps. But the challenge lay in the logistics. The SS demanded a list of workers who would be transferred. This list would determine who lived and who faced the gas chambers of Auschwitz. Crafting this list was a meticulous and risky endeavor. Each name added was a life saved, and the responsibility weighed heavily on Schindler and his allies. Together with Itzhak Stern and a few other trusted associates, Schindler began crafting the list. The original list contained 1,000 names, but as word spread, it expanded. Families pleaded for their loved ones to be included, and Schindler, driven by a combination of compassion and audacity, made numerous revisions. Men, women, children, the elderly, Schindler was determined to save as many as he could. The final list encompassed over 1,200 names, each one representing a beacon of hope amidst the surrounding despair. The creation of the list was fraught with challenges, Bribes had to be paid, and Schindler exhausted much of his fortune ensuring that the list was accepted by the SS. He faced opposition, skepticism, and outright threats. However, his reputation, cunning, and relentless determination ensured the list's acceptance and the subsequent relocation of his workers to Brunlitz. The Brunlitz factory, under Schindler's leadership, became a haven. While it ostensibly produced munitions, Schindler ensured that it never actually produced any viable ammunition for the Nazi war machine. It was a facade, a cover to protect the lives under his care. The workers, fully aware of Schindler's sacrifices and the sanctuary the factory represented, lived in a state of guarded relief. They were still prisoners, but they were alive, and hope persisted. The significance of Schindler's list goes beyond the immediate lives it saved. It stands as a tangible symbol of resistance against the Nazi regime's overwhelming machinery of death. In a world where conformity to evil was the norm, 
The list was a bold declaration of dissent. It highlighted the potential of individual actions, driven by conviction and courage, to challenge and disrupt systemic atrocities. Difficulties and Challenges Schindler's audacious mission to save the lives of his Jewish workers was far from a straightforward endeavor. Each step of the way, he faced monumental challenges that tested his resolve, resourcefulness, and moral compass. The path he chose was riddled with obstacles, both external and internal, each posing its unique set of difficulties. Externally, the ever-watchful eyes of the SS and the overarching Nazi machinery presented the most apparent and immediate threats. The Nazis were not just a faceless, bureaucratic entity. They were individuals with varying degrees of allegiance to the party's ideology. While some officers could be bribed or convinced to turn a blind eye, Others were staunchly committed to the extermination directive. Navigating this precarious landscape required Schindler to constantly gauge whom he could trust and whom he should avoid. Every interaction was a calculated risk, with the stakes being the lives of over a thousand individuals. Financial strain was another significant challenge. Maintaining the facade of a functional factory and safeguarding his workers came at a hefty cost. Bribes had to be frequently paid to officials to ensure the factory's continued operation and to stave off inspections that could reveal its non-productive nature. Schindler's personal fortune, amassed through his earlier business ventures and his. Operations during the war was progressively drained. By the war's end, he was virtually penniless, having expended his resources for the sake of his workers. Logistical challenges were omnipresent, whether it was procuring enough food to feed his workers, ensuring they had adequate shelter, or managing the day-to-day -day operations of a factory designed not to produce, Schindler had to be perpetually innovative. As the war intensified and resources became scarcer, these logistical challenges grew. Schindler had to pull every string, call in every favor, and use every ounce of his entrepreneurial spirit to keep the operation running. The internal challenges Schindler faced were equally daunting. While his resolve to save lives was unyielding, the emotional and psychological toll was immense. The weight of responsibility, the constant fear of exposure, and the sheer scale of the surrounding atrocities would have broken many. Sleepless nights, fraught decisions, and the pervasive atmosphere of fear and uncertainty marked Schindler's daily existence. Furthermore, Schindler grappled with the moral complexities of his situation. While his overarching goal was undeniably noble, the means to achieve it often tread in moral gray areas. He had to lie, bribe, and manipulate to safeguard his workers. This constant dance on the razor's edge of ethics was mentally exhausting. Relationships presented another set of challenges. While many of his Jewish workers revered him, others were understandably skeptical of his motives, at least initially. Earning their trust was a gradual process, forged through consistent actions that demonstrated his commitment to their well-being. On the other end of the spectrum, Schindler's relationships with fellow Nazis grew increasingly strained. His actions, though covert, did not go entirely unnoticed. Whispers of his sympathies and subversive activities made him a pariah among many of his former peers and friends. Post-war years and life in Argentina The close of World War II marked the end of one chapter in Oscar Schindler's life and the beginning of another, laden with its own set of struggles and challenges. The man who had saved over 1,200 Jewish lives found himself navigating a post-war world that was vastly different from the one he had known. His actions during the war, though heroic, did not translate into immediate success or recognition in the years that followed. As the war concluded, Schindler found himself facing a significant dilemma. He was, after all, a member of the Nazi party, and the approaching allies posed a direct threat to him. Recognizing this, the Jews he saved famously presented him with a letter, often referred to as the Schindler Jews. Letter, attesting to his efforts to save lives during the Holocaust. Armed with this document, Schindler and his wife Emily fled westward to avoid capture by the advancing Soviet forces. The immediate post-war years were challenging for Schindler. His finances were severely depleted, and he lacked a clear direction. 
The world he had known, marked by business ventures and opportunistic dealings, had shifted dramatically. In 1948, perhaps seeking a fresh start, Schindler and his wife emigrated to Argentina. Argentina, during this period, was a popular destination for many Europeans seeking to rebuild their lives. The vast, fertile plains and the promise of a new beginning attracted a myriad of immigrants, including several former Nazis. For Schindler, Argentina was an opportunity to return to his entrepreneurial roots. He settled in the province of San Vicente and invested in a farming venture, hoping to capitalize on the country's agricultural potential. However, success remained elusive. The farming venture failed, as did subsequent business endeavors. Schindler's lack of familiarity with the local business landscape, combined with his dwindling resources, made stability a distant dream. Furthermore, his reputation as the savior of Jews did not carry the same weight in Argentina as it did in Europe. To many, he was just another immigrant trying to make a living. Personal challenges also plagued Schindler during his Argentine years. His tumultuous marriage with Emily faced further strain. The financial pressures, combined with Schindler's persistent alcoholism and extramarital affairs, created an environment of tension and discord. Emily eventually returned to Germany, while Schindler chose to stay behind in Argentina. By the late 1950s, Schindler's situation in Argentina had become untenable. Faced with mounting debts and a sense of disillusionment, he made the decision to return to Germany. Leaving behind the land that had promised so much yet delivered so little, Schindler sought solace in his homeland. Legacy and Recognition While the immediate aftermath of World War II saw Oskar Schindler grappling with personal and financial challenges, his enduring legacy would eventually find its rightful place in the annals of history. As the years passed and the true horrors of the Holocaust became widely acknowledged, the significance of Schindler's actions during those dark times grew in prominence, leading to widespread recognition and honors. Schindler's initial recognition came, fittingly, from the very people whose lives he had saved. The Schindler Jews, as they came to be known, held deep reverence and gratitude for the man who had risked everything for their safety. This community, which grew to include the descendants of those originally saved, became the torchbearers of Schindler's legacy. They shared their stories across generations, ensuring that Schindler's sacrifices and the tale of his unlikely heroism would not fade with time. In 1962, Schindler's contributions were formally recognized by Yad Vashem, Israel's official memorial to the victims of the Holocaust. He was named Righteous Among the Nations, an honor bestowed upon non-Jews who risked their lives during the Holocaust to save Jews from extermination by the Nazis. This recognition was not just symbolic. It was a vindication of Schindler's actions and a public acknowledgement of his role in resisting one of history's most heinous genocides. Emily Schindler, Oscar's wife, who had played a quiet yet vital role alongside him during the war, was also honored with the title in 1994. Her efforts, particularly in providing care and medical aid to the workers, were instrumental in many of the life-saving endeavors at the factory. Beyond formal recognitions, Schindler's story began to permeate global consciousness through literature and film. The 1982 novel Schindler's Ark by Thomas Keneally brought Schindler's story to a broader audience. This novel was later adapted into the critically acclaimed film Schindler's List, directed by Steven Spielberg in 1993. The film, with its evocative portrayal of Schindler's journey and the harrowing realities of the Holocaust, resonated deeply with audiences worldwide. It not only won numerous awards, including the Academy Award for Best Picture, but also played a pivotal role in educating the global populace about the Holocaust and Schindler's audacious efforts during that period. The impact of the film was profound. Schindler's gravesite in Jerusalem became a place of homage, frequently visited by people from across the globe. The narrative of an unlikely hero, a Nazi party, member who turned against the very machinery he was once a part of, offered a glimmer of hope and humanity amidst the overwhelmingly tragic narrative of the Holocaust. However, like all historical figures, Schindler's legacy is multifaceted. 
While he is lauded for his efforts to save lives, his complexities, including his flaws and moral ambiguities, have also been subjects of discussion. Some historians and scholars have delved into the nuances of his character, offering a more holistic view of the man behind the legend. Schindler's Impact on Modern Historical Perspective The story of Oskar Schindler, replete with its intricacies and paradoxes, has had a profound influence on how modern history perceives and interprets the Holocaust. Beyond the numbers and the bleak chronicles of World War II, Schindler's narrative introduces a deeply personal dimension to the historical account, reshaping discussions and inviting introspection on broader themes of morality, resistance, and the human capacity for goodness amidst evil. Schindler's tale stands as a counter-narrative to the overarching theme of the Holocaust, that of overwhelming brutality and the mechanized extermination of millions. In the vast, bleak expanse of this tragedy, stories like Schindler's provide focal points of hope and resilience. They remind us that even in the darkest periods, there were pockets of light, instances where individuals defied the tide to uphold human dignity. In academic and educational contexts, Schindler's story is often employed as a gateway to discuss the broader complexities of the Holocaust. While the sheer scale of the genocide can be numbing, Personal narratives like Schindler's make the event more accessible and relatable. They humanize the abstract, allowing students and viewers to engage with history at an intimate level. This personal connection often proves instrumental in fostering empathy, understanding, and a deeper appreciation for the significance of historical events. Furthermore, Schindler's narrative has prompted historians and scholars to delve deeper into the roles of bystanders during the Holocaust. The notion that vast populations remained passive or indifferent during this period has been a subject of contention and debate. Schindler's actions compel a re-evaluation of this perspective, prompting questions about the spectrum of resistance. How did others in their capacities challenge the Nazi regime? How pervasive was silent dissent? Schindler becomes a touchstone for exploring these gray areas in historical accounts, revealing a more nuanced landscape of resistance than previously acknowledged. The global impact of Schindler's List, both the novel and the film, has further amplified Schindler's influence on modern historical perspectives. As a cultural phenomenon, the film not only educated vast audiences about the Holocaust, but also prompted discussions on moral choices, personal agency, and the role of individuals in shaping history. The visual portrayal of Schindler's journey, juxtaposed against the stark realities of the Holocaust, has made it a seminal work in Holocaust education worldwide. Additionally, Schindler's story has been instrumental in fostering Holocaust remembrance and ensuring that the lessons of this tragic period are not lost to future generations. Monuments, museums, and educational programs worldwide often incorporate elements of Schindler's narrative to illustrate the broader themes of heroism, sacrifice, and moral duty.